In this quick Blender tutorial, we're going to take a look at how you can make realistic clouds using geometry nodes. We'll start off with a brand new scene and we'll select our default cube. We'll go to our geometry nodes tab and create a new geometry node network. We're going to take the group input geometry and delete it so we end up with an empty object. We'll take our group output and connect the geometry up to something that will create our volume and that will be a volume cube. So now we have a volume to work with but the quality is maybe a bit low. So we'll change the resolution on X, Y, and Z for the voxels to 128 by 128 by 128. It might seem like this box is a bit too tall right now. So we're gonna set our maximum to zero. So it cuts off above the axis here. So we end up with half the size or half the height of that volume. Next, we'll take our volume cube and we're going to drag out the density and remap it. We're going to use a map range, which will allow us to remap values that we have here. Now, we don't have any values at the moment, but what we'll do is drag out that value and create a gradient texture. We're going to create a gradient texture, but connect it up to the factor and we're going to set that to be a spherical. Now we kind of have a hemisphere upside down on our volume here. So we kind of see that volume being cut out. Now we're going to invert that. So we're going to invert that by adjusting this map range. We're going to set the from minimum to 0.5, our from maximum to 0.125, our to minimum to zero, and our to maximum to two. Now what we're going to also do is change this from linear to stepped linear. And now we get a steps amount and we'll change that steps amount to 0 0.05. Now we get a volume where we have kind of half a sphere cut away from the center of it. This gives us a nice kind of starting shape for our clouds. We're going to take the vector connection, drag it out to a divide vector math divide node. Now what we're going to do is divide a texture by a value in X, Y, and Z. So the texture that we're going to divide is going to be a Voronoi texture position. And we're going to divide that by one in Z. And now you can see we get a lot of these interesting little spiky shapes that kind of resemble blocky clouds. The next thing that we're going to do is have to change some settings on our Voronoi texture. We're going to set this to a smooth F1. And for the type, we'll just go through here and see what works best. But this Chebyshev one works pretty well. Now we're going to change our scale to three. And now we start to get some bigger shapes broken up here. And this gives us a good starting point for our clouds. And all we need to do is start adding some higher frequency details. To add those higher frequency details, we're going to separate our graph a bit here around the map range node. And what we're going to do is take our value from our map range, disconnect it, drag it out to a add math node. The second value will connect to our factor here. We'll set it to clamp. And the very first value, we're going to connect to another texture, some textures that will do some higher frequency details. So we'll drag this out to another Voronoi texture, but this time we're going to connect it up to distance. Now what you'll see is a bunch of these tiny little dots. Now we can make those dots bigger or have them grow by connecting our distance here to something like a smooth minimum node. So a math smooth minimum. And if I connect it to that and connect that back to our add, what we'll see is we have a value here that we can clamp. And then we have a distance where if I increase it, we can spread out those little points and get bigger shapes or smaller clusters. Now that's pretty cool, but what we're going to do is take the secondary value here of the smooth minimum node and connect that to the distance of our other Voronoi texture. And now we start to get some interesting shapes. I'm going to put the distance at 2.5 and now we get some really nice cloud looking shapes and to break up their patterning a little bit more, we'll go to this Voronoi texture we have here. We'll change it maybe to F2. 
will set the scale a bit higher to something like 10. And now we have a lot of these kind of realistic looking cloud-like shapes. Now that we have that, we can take a look at our full graph here. Not that much things that we had to add, and we got some pretty cool looking clouds. So all we have to do now is maybe assign a material. So I'm gonna go to my shading tab. On the shading tab, I'm gonna take the material for this surface. I'll delete the principled BSDF. I'll connect the volume to a principled uh, volume. I'll leave it default settings, maybe upping the density a little bit to 1.5 or something, but you can choose some settings that you think look good. But I'll go back to the geometry nodes, apply this material by connecting this volume to a set material node, select that material that I just created or edited, and that is pretty much it. Now the very final thing that we can do is go to our layout tab, maybe delete our default light, go in here and add a sunlight, maybe angle our sunlight to be a little bit more from the horizon, something like that, and maybe set up our sunlight intensity, maybe make it something like 10 or 20, and then what we can also do is go to our little world icon here, set our background color to something like a kind of blue sky, and you can adjust this to your liking, and then we can just frame our view. So I'll go in here and, you know what, maybe I'll just turn on the interactive render here, but before that, set the rendering uh, mode to make sure that it is, you know, if it's not set to cycles, you're gonna get something like this. But if you go here, change it to cycles, and there we go. Shut off my grid units for now. And we have some clouds. So very easy and very quick. We can start to build some simple volumes that give us pretty good looking clouds within a few minutes. If you enjoyed this video or you learned something new, don't forget to like, subscribe, let me know what kind of content you'd like to see next. And if you're part of the Patreon, which you can find a link to in the description below, you'll also get access to the PDF for this video that goes over all the steps that we went through in this video in a little bit more detail. So if you're part of the Patreon, you can grab that, or if you're not part of the Patreon, you can click in the description below and check that out.